Today, I want to show you a new piece of software we just released called Trust. But before that, let me explain you why we made it in the first place. Six months ago, I started working on our new DevOps infrastructure. The goal is to create a continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment platform that is a product similar to Chef and Puppet, but a free one. In this product, the infrastructure is described in JSON format. So, for instance, the IP address of a given application server or the location of a backup for a database server are stored in JSON files, which are then used during the deployment. But then, it appears that we have a huge problem, even two problems. One is data duplication. For instance, we have to declare the IP of our DNS servers not once, but six times in our code base. The second problem is security. For now, everyone can access everything, and since those JSON files contain things such as root passwords, this may not be the, uh, not be the best we can do in terms of data confidentiality. This is why we started working on Trust project. Trust is a sort of hierarchical database engine with read-only access. A data architect defines the data structure in a single or multiple JSON files or MongoDB documents, and then this data is accessed through a client, either a Python script or a REST service. Trust has two essential features. One is inheritance. It is a special feature which enables the data architect to tell that a given piece of data is not here, but somewhere else. This is exactly what makes it possible to mitigate the risk of data duplication. The second feature is security and audit. Data architects can use specific statements which describe who can access what. When a client accesses data marked as sensitive, an audit is made so you can easily track who exactly tried to access a particular piece of data. For the purpose of the demo, I've opened four windows. The one showing the logs, the other one showing the audit, the one which executes the comments on a remote server, and the last one which we will use to access the remote server through HTTP. Let's start by installing Trust. The next step is to create a data directory. I already created two files here. For now, I want to focus on example JSON file. If you check the deployment directory, you can notice that there is a local trust client there. If I specify the location of the data and the query itself, Then Jine returns as a query result. If you want to access the database remotely, there are additional steps to do. The package contains a Flask blueprint, which makes it very easy to embed trust in an existing application. If you want to have it as a standalone Flask application, make sure you check the project source code, which contains an example. This is what I'm doing right now, and I'll just make a few changes to, uh, in order to reflect the actual configuration. Now I can run the web application. And you can see that I have an access from a browser, or I can query directly the values. You may have noticed in the uh, example JSON data file that there is a particular node which is restricted. If I try to access it like this,
I'm receiving the permission denied here in response. I can access it if I specify the username and the password, but let's first glance at the user's file. As you can see, the password hash is missing. To generate a hash, Trust package contains an utility which can be called like this. Then I can copy the generated password back to the user's file. Now, by using the same password on client side, I can access restricted nodes as well. If you have any questions about the project, contact me. This is an open source project, so contributions are also welcome. Make sure you visit the website of the project and especially the playground where you can test different queries.